So we're here with the Orbital Composites, and uh, who are you? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Cole Nielsen from Orbital Composites. This is uh, a carbon fiber extruder. This is designed to enable you to 3D print copper wires, carbon fiber, um, and pretty much any long strand. So actually what comes out of this machine is a, a plastic sheath with a, a long fiber like this one here. Um, and then basically you feed in traditional uh, plastics into the nozzle this way, and then long fibers actually go through the nozzle and come out here. So this is a 3D printer? This is a 3D printer tool, yeah. But where does it go? Well, this, this can go on any printer. Uh, so the, the thing is that we can then uh, put, this, put this on a CNC machine, we could put this inside of another 3D printer that's more conventional. And did you 3D print the th this machine? Yeah, I, I printed most of this. <laughs> so you printed the printer? Yeah, yeah, the whole, the whole RepRap dream, right? Yeah. Um, so, so then actually we can take this, and that's how these tubes were made. These long carbon fiber tubes were actually wrapped using this tool. So what we're looking at here is carbon fiber encapsulated in ABS, wound over an ABS mandrel that's left in place. The stiffness of this object is extremely high. Um, it's very, very impressive. So it's not going to break? Uh, well, I mean, eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> um, what, but, what other stuff are you showing here? Sure. So when we started printing with the carbon fiber, uh, we actually have a, a nozzle. This is the inside of the nozzle. And so basically what ends up happening is the plastic goes into the nozzle through here and then begins to swirl around and turns into a tube. Then the long strands go down the center. If you imagine how you insulate wire, that's basically how this works. Except we move this through space um, and that's how we end up printing with a continuous strand of something. Um, so of something, anything you want, carbon fiber, copper wire, fiberglass, uh, fiber optic cables, uh, various various objects. All right. Um, what is that? So this this is actually a new kind of filament driver, because what we noticed is that when when you uh, when you have a traditional uh, yeah no, sorry <laughs> yeah, it's just you're going to so cool. right? No no so. no no problem. So what what how does it work? Well let me let me show this one first, just for. So this is a traditional uh, filament driver mechanism. And if you look inside there, you can actually see that there's all this plastic dust inside. And so what actually ends up happening is if you look, you have a round driver mechanism or hob, and then you have a round idler bearing on the other side. Now, the filament goes through in a straight line. And the problem there is that the surface area point of contact between two round objects is zero. So the only thing that's actually driving the plastic through the tool are the small serrated teeth on this driver mechanism. The problem with that is you're only able to use between one and three at a time. And so the issue with that then becomes that if you have too much back pressure inside the system, then it ends up stripping the filament. And then you have a, a failure. The, the build stops in place. The other part of this is, is that when the back pressure increases, it tends to open this, which then of course causes it to, to fail yet again. So in order to solve this problem permanently... So you have a solution? We have this. So did you invent this? We did. Um, this is our, our really high force, high pressure filament driver. And so the way this one actually ends up working is that instead of using the point of contact between two cylinders, we're actually wrapping the filament around the drive wheel. So instead of between one and three teeth driving the plastic, now we have about 40. And so the point is with that, that we have a lot more friction going through all these little teeth. We have a lot more friction. And then the, the, the pressure here is, you know, about 10 to 15 pounds. The other thing is that when these bearings end up being pushed away from the wheel, if I press this one away from the drive wheel, this one presses harder. If I press these two bearings away from the drive wheel, these two press harder. And so then what that means is that when this would traditionally begin to fail, this one actually gains driving force by increasing the friction internally. So this enables us to really, really drive the plastic. That means that we can start adding transmissions and much, much larger motors to drive the same filament as before. So the result is that inside of our tool, we end up with much higher, dry, uh, much higher pressures internally inside the tool. And then as a consequence, you can print faster but more importantly, the failures that generate in this area traditionally are stopped permanently. We want to blow fuses on the motherboard because this motor is too big. That's the, the correct way to solve this problem. So this is our driver. This will be available quarter one of, uh, of next year, 2016. Where are you going to put this? Uh, this is actually a plug and play device. 
It's using a traditional uh, filament driving motor, and this guy is going to be uh, just plug and play with with every uh, every desktop machine that that's out there. So uh, your company is uh, upgrading uh, 3D printing. Right. This is so, about what you do. Right. Right. So these are these are some of the novel technologies that we've generated. Um, so basically, the coaxial extruder, which is this guy here. This is what enables us to print continuous fibers. And so this, this actually enables uh, 3D printers to create end-use parts. Um, then the, the next, one of the other tricks that we have here is capillary injection molding. And the idea with this one is this enables us to actually, uh, if we add short chop fibers into our injection material, into our epoxies that we're injecting, we can then actually get fibers to be aligned with the z-axis across the print layers, which dramatically increases the, the print quality, the, the end strength. But the other part of that is, think about how fast you can push a cylinder, uh, push a uh, syringe. You can actually build a lot quicker by printing out a very thin shell and injection molding it in place so that you end up creating a much more solid object very, very quickly. Um, and transition over here. So what's going on here? Well, let's talk about this first. Yeah. So, so these are our uh, 3D printed carbon fiber uh, table legs. Um, these are actually made with the coaxial extruder, and um, yeah, I guess that's about that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, and we can talk about this guy. So this this is just an example drone. If you look at it, what we see is that non-structural elements are actually made out of 3D printed plastic. So you know we've got you know, this stuff, computer box, but really nothing that's truly truly important. But so. Orbital Composites is made up of a group of aerospace engineers looking for a better way to do business. And so the, the one key thing that we noted about 3D printing in general is if you ask most printer companies, you know, well, what can you make? The answer is anything. But what they really mean is mostly prototypes in about this shape most of the time. Mostly stuff that doesn't launch into space. Mostly stuff that is, is not end use. Our goal is to be able to, to very specifically print one thing well, drones and satellites. They're almost exactly the same object. So because we have specificity, we can achieve excellence because can, we can then print these things better than you could normally. You can print them. that? Uh, that's what we're going to do next because we, look, we have a, a carbon fiber tube here. This is a carbon fiber tube. But here's the trick of coaxial extrusion. So if you look at this drone in general, it basically breaks down to three basic elements. You have carbon fiber, copper wire, and some form of plastic. The insulation is silicone. The epoxy is some form of plastic. These parts are thermoplastic. And so the point is, if you can master those three elements, then you have the ability to create about 80% of this aircraft in a single piece, in a single print. And so that actually ends up being a tremendously powerful tool. So how soon? The coaxial extruder, this how is soon what is that possible? This for. What's that? Well, how soon is it possible to print all this? Um, we're, we're rapidly going down the development path. So, you know, about a year or so, we should be able to print pretty much all of this. Notice that we've already printed out a carbon fiber tube. All we have to do is increase the density of the carbon and then we're starting to make this. Uh, flat plates are one of the other things. But what's, what's really cool about this is that we can also take all this wiring. Look at all this wiring that's on here. It's a tremendous amount of wire on every single drone that's out there because they're electric vehicles. And so if you actually start to print these in, that means you can print with a lot less carbon and you can actually save a tremendous amount of space. This makes the aircraft lighter and faster. So uh, here at the ID Tech X show and in general, so what are you looking for? Connecting with uh, companies? Um, so we're really looking for, uh, I guess, to find clients to, to be interested in using our, our printer drivers, as well as to form strategic partnerships so that we can um, end up getting our tools into the hands of other printer companies and finally to the end consumer. Uh, our long-term vision actually is to 3D print satellites in orbit. Because we've noted that if you can print out carbon fiber, copper wire, that means you can also start printing out antennas, uh, your circuit boards, your structures, a lot of things that you need. So then if you just put your batteries, your solar panels, and your computers, you just drop those into your aircraft, your spacecraft, then you can actually start to print things in orbit. For example, it takes about two years to get a football-sized satellite into orbit. But if you could print it in space, you could have it done in about two days. This completely changes the shape of a small company if they want to produce satellites for uh, for their business model. So you, you plan to bring the 3D printer to space? Correct. As and a then standalone you need to, satellite to, to bring the materials to put in a printer, right? Right. So we're going to take pretty much everything up there in, in a standalone device, no astronauts needed, and go ahead and, and just print everything out. And then basically throw it. You could go to Mars, right? Uh, start printing on Mars? Uh, I mean, that's, that's our destiny, isn't it? I guess the Martian would have 
it would have been useful for him if... Uh, That's his the, tale from the future. We'll be there soon enough. <laughs>